Eyewitness News is covering the economy for you now. If you took a cab, brought your pet to the groomer, or even treated yourself to a pricey new shirt today, you may have noticed you paid extra. That's because some new tax changes went into effect today. Eyewitness News reporter Andrew Adamson joins us now. More on those new taxes. There's no bones about it. Pet owners are very unhappy about the newly implemented taxes that will likely make taking care of their furry friends a little more expensive. And business owners like pet groomers are worried it's going to take a bite out of their business. Yeah. <laughs> Say hello to Toby the Tibetan Spaniel. His owner Don Nero has been taking him to dog sitting at the barking lot on Allen's Avenue in Providence for a year. Well, my dog has a lot of anxiety so he can be there during the day and not annoying the neighbors while I'm at work. But that may change now that a 7% sales and use tax is being applied to pet care services in Rhode Island. He's still going to come, but I may have to reduce some of his days a bit. The Barking Lot's co-owner, Stephen Seralt, is not a fan of the state's decision to implement the taxes on boarding, grooming, sitting, and training pets. Seralt says he's worried business could suffer. He believes pet owners are being asked to unfairly foot the state's bill. They didn't run up that $50 million bill. You know, it went through the whole state but they're being asked to pay it off. I, I just don't think it's fair. And it's not just pet grooming. The budget bill approved in June also includes a 7% sales tax on clothing costing more than $250 per item and taxi cab and other transportation services. Seralt wishes the state would have gone with a different tax alternative, the meal tax. Just about everybody goes out to uh, dinner or lunch, you know, so it would have been spread out among the people who use the 50 million much more evenly than this would. The Barking Lots owners say that they hope that someday these pet grooming taxes will be taken back, but they're not very optimistic at this point. With the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Andrew Adamson, Eyewitness News.